Hello everyone, welcome to the Ankylosing Spondylitis Spaces Station 5 podcast. I am Dr. Costa. Ankylosing Spondylitis is a HLA B27 associated spondyloarthropathy. It typically presents in males. The male to female ratio is 5 is to 1 and it can present during the 20s and it has polygenic inheritance. The typical scenario for this case would include chip complaints of back pain, plus minus neck or back stiffness, plus minus exertional dyspnea. And your typical patient would be a male. The patient can be a old patient or can be a young patient. Since the disease is long standing, if the patient is an old guy, then he will have more established clinical features and he would definitely have some history of medications intake related to ankylosing spondylitis and some history of physiotherapy as well. So let's consider you have a scenario telling you that there is a male patient complaining of back pain and stiffness and you have entered the examination room. After entering the examination room, your first task would be to sanitize your hand and then to introduce yourself. You can simply introduce yourself by telling the patient, hello, I'm Dr. Costa, one of the basis candidates here today. Then you would start taking the history at first you have to ask about the pain questions in details you can use socrates formula for pain questions s stands for sight o stands for onset c character r radiation a associated features t for timing e for exacerbating and relieving factors and finally s for severity of pain You can ask about the site of the pain like this. Where exactly the pain is located? Can you show me? You can ask about the onset like this. When did the pain exactly start? Did it start suddenly or gradually? Is it remaining same or is it increasing or decreasing throughout the time period? You can ask him about the radiation does the pain moves or radiates to another location for example your feet is anything else like any numbness or weakness associated with the pain also don't forget to ask about the stiffness particularly the morning stiffness the timing of the pain can be asked like is it painful throughout the day or does the pain comes and goes is there any particular time period in a day when it feels more painful Next, ask about the exacerbating factors like any movement, walking, exercising, etc. And relieving factors like any painkillers or taking rest, etc. Finally, to complete the pain questions, you must ask about the severity of pain by simply asking in a scale of 1 to 10, if the 10 is the most severe pain, how do you rate your pain? After finishing the pain questions, your next task is to ask about the red flag signs of ankylosing spondylitis that are caused by spinal stenosis due to any reasons. So you can ask him to have any history of diarrhea or constipation, any problem with your bladder, for example, incontinence of your water work, do you have any numbness in your saddle area, any new leg weakness or any new numbness over your legs do you have any weight loss or any history of cancer please remember in a ankylosing spondylitis case your main differentials to exclude are psoriatic arthropathy enteropathic arthritis rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis so ask one or two specific questions to exclude these differentials You can simply ask him, do you have any rash or any history of skin rash or do you have any joint deformity? Then you should start examining the patient. You can tell him, can you stand up and walk for me? Here you check his posture and gait. The typical posture of a long-standing ankylosing spondylitis case is a question mark posture, which means stooped posture, loss of 
lumbar lordosis and exaggerated thoracic kyphosis and neck hyperextension with protuberant abdomen. Next, you should check the neck movement of the patient in every direction. The examiner should expect you to do a Schober's test at this point. You should draw two points marked 15 cm apart on the dorsal spine of the patient which would expand by less than 5 cm on maximum forward flexion to give a positive Schober's test. Check the occiput wall distance. If it is more than 5 cm, then it is very significant. Check the patient's eyes for any anterior uveitis or redness. Measure the chest expansion of the patient using a measuring tape if available. Then you should auscultate his chest for fibrosis, especially the apical fibrosis and his heart for aortic regurgitation murmur. You should quickly examine his hands for any psoriatic plaques, nail dystrophy and dactylitis and his feet for any tendinitis and any power or sensory loss. Finally, check his feet for any leg edema because ankylosing spondylitis can cause IgA nephropathy and then end your examination. Then ask the patient about any significant personal history, family history, previous history of any medication use or any surgical history, any history of hospital admission. Ask about any occupational problems due to this disease, any social issues, is he living alone, is there any caregiver, is he financially sound. Don't forget to ask about smoking and alcoholism history. Then you should explain ankylosing spondylitis to the patient. You can tell him that according to the history and physical examination, I think you have a rheumatological condition called ankylosing spondylitis. It is a long-standing joint disease which causes joint stiffness and pain. But fortunately, we have treatments for it. I would give you some painkillers and tag you with our rheumatologist who would probably give you further investigations and medications. Some of the investigations can be your blood test, your urine test and some imaging tests like joint x-rays. You would also need some physiotherapy and long-term follow-up. The further instructions and plans for your treatment would be provided by our rheumatologist. Then ask about the concerns of the patient and if he tells you about any particular concern like any occupational problem, any social problem or if he asks about any particular treatment then answer that concern. Some of the common concerns are doctor I have difficulty in my job field then you should refer him to the occupational therapist. If he has difficulty in his social life, then you can refer him to the social support team. If he has any problem in his day-to-day -day life, then you can assign one caregiver to him. The patient can ask you, doctor, is it a tumor? Is it life-threatening? Am I going to die? Then you should reassure the patient and tell him that I don't think it's something life-threatening. It's just a chronic disease and we do have treatment to relieve your pain. Finally, end the discussion with the patient by telling him about smoking cessation and alcohol cessation if relevant and also tell him about DVLA because severe restriction in neck movement is notifiable to DVLA. Then turn around and face the examiner. Look at his eyes. You should make the eye contact to show the examiner that you are a very confident doctor and then start presenting your findings sequentially and at the end of that presentation you should tell that my diagnosis is ankylosing spondylitis and then you should stop. Then the examiners can ask you what are the complications or extra-articular manifestations of ankylosing spondylitis. Then you would answer anterior uveitis, apical fibrosis, aortitis or aortic insufficiency, AV node block, amyloidosis, atlantoaxial dislocation and IgA nephropathy. All of these complications starts with A. 
examiners may ask you how do you investigate this patient to reach your diagnosis you can then simply tell him that i would do some blood tests including full blood count crp esr hemoglobin percentage and urea and serum electrolyte to check for kidney function i would do a hla b27 test because it is positive for more than 90 percent of the ankylosing spondylitis cases i would do extra of his lumbar spine sacroiliac joint and pelvis it can be normal in early disease so i would also do a mri test i would also do bedside urine dipstick test and urine routine medical examination i would do ecg checking for any arrhythmia i would do chest x-ray and if needed hrct to check for any apical fibrosis examiners may ask you what are the typical lumbosacral x-ray findings in case of ankylosing spondylitis the typical findings are bilateral symmetrical sacroiliac erosive changes subchondral sclerosis obliteration and fusion of sacroiliac joint bamboo spine appearance and squaring of vertebral bodies examiners can ask you about the complications of long-term steroid use here you talk about the avascular necrosis of femoral and humeral heads but there are other complications of long-term steroid use which i would talk in detail in cushing syndrome station 5 paces podcast finally you can be asked about the management of ankylosing spondylitis which you should divide in three parts general management medical management and surgery the general management for ankylosing spondylitis are regular physical exercise plus physiotherapy plus hydrotherapy smoking and alcohol cessation the medical management can be in the form of analgesia for example nsaid plus gastric protection sometimes we also need steroid which can be oral intramuscular or intraarticular methotrexate is also an option and finally if nothing relieves his suffering then anti-tnf agents can be given for the central joint disease surgery is our last option we can do joint replacement of severely damaged or stiff joints